Let me just say, I love you guys. I made the video yesterday talking about the Canucks and Red Wings post-game, and that was a video that I know was going to get some flame in the comments because I have Red Wings fans and I have Canucks fans on this YouTube channel who watch these videos and who are so lovely to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. So when I was reading the comments of yesterday's post-game video, it just kind of got me laughing, you know? Okay, this is exactly what I was expecting. Both fan bases kind of going after each other in some ways or another. Some people were saying the Garland hit on Zadina was clean, others saying it wasn't. Red Wings fans saying it was dangerous and intentional and illegal. Other Red Wings fans saying that it was clean. That's kind of the dichotomy that I was expecting in that comment section, but you know what? Because Detroit got their victory yesterday, I wanted to dedicate some time to going over the Vancouver side of things and giving Vancouver a little bit of a victory lap themselves. Because not only did Connor Garland score the only goal in the Vancouver Canucks 3-1 loss against the Red Wings yesterday, but he did a few other things in the past few games that I do think are so noteworthy to this team that it's just kind of crazy how beloved this guy has been in the very opening parts of the year. So, let's revisit the Connor Garland trade and talk about how excited I am for the next five years of seeing Connor Garland play in a Vancouver Canucks sweater. So, if we go back to the trade with the Arizona Coyotes where the Vancouver Canucks acquired Garland in the offseason, it was a huge, huge trade. Erickson, Beagle, Roussel, a first, a second, and a seventh for Connor Garland and Oliver ekman Larson with salary retained. Now, we're all kind of familiar with the breakdown of how this trade went down. Erickson, Beagle, Roussel, the cap dumps in exchange for Oliver ekman Larson, who is another cap dump, and in order to get that to go through, there were the draft picks like the second and the seventh involved as well, but... If you decide to break down the trade like that, you're remaining with Connor Garland and the first round pick, that in which was seen as the most valuable piece on both teams' perspectives in this trade. Garland in the first was one trade, and then the rest of the things kind of balanced itself afterwards when you looked at the draft picks and Erickson and Beagle and Roussel and ekman Larson and his massive contract. This pretty much is the transaction that I wanted to highlight. Connor Garland and the first, because the first round pick that the Vancouver Canucks gave over to the Arizona Coyotes was ninth overall, and the guy that the Coyotes selected with number nine was Dylan Genther. Now, Genther, to me, was probably the best player available at that spot in the draft. I honestly wasn't expecting the 2021 draft to go the way that it did, where pretty much everybody that I had at the top of my list went in some form or another the order in which they were going in the top eight. Genther, Clark, Eklund, Edvinson, Johnson, Hughes, McTavish, Beneers, and Power were all the guys that I kind of had in that range, and at number nine, with Dylan Genther being the last guy available, I was kind of like, okay. To me, at nine, it would have been Genther or Jesper Wallstead that I would have seen as the most valuable player at that spot. But the Arizona Coyotes had the pick, and they indeed selected Genther. So if you try to break down this part of the ekman larsen trade in this way, you pretty much just have Dylan Genther and Connor Garland getting swapped. Now, this trade, to me, if you want to look at this transaction by itself, is one that I believe is so, so good. Based off of what the Vancouver Canucks are, based off of what Garland is, and based off of what Genther is today as well. Dylan Genther, if you want to go over the entire scouting report once again, his ceiling, to me, is a pretty good first-line complementary winger. Not really an Elias Pettersson who can go out there and dictate a play. Not really an Austin Matthews who can go out there and drive a play. But more like that William Nylander kind of mold, where, yes, he's going to go out there, he's probably going to have 70-point potential, he's probably going to have 30-goal potential, he's going to be a good player, and you're going to want this guy on your team. But... Dylan Genther, to me, was always the kind of guy that plays his best when he's playing with some other really star-studded players as well. He's not really the play driver. He plays really well in the perimeter. He does a really good job when he's holding onto the puck in the boards. He does a really good job finding guys, and he can snipe it as well. But you kind of need him to be a part of a cohesive unit in order to be the most effective. And it's kind of why, to me, even though some scouts said that Genther could have gone as high as first overall... Again, you have to remember, this 2021 draft was a weaker draft in comparison to 2020, even 2022. This draft is not really it. So, Genther being one of the top guys is good, but it's just if Genther was available last year, who knows how high he could have gone then. 
sure, he had a fantastic point season in the 2021 campaign. 24 points in 12 games played for the Edmonton Oil Kings. However, this season with the Oil Kings, three points in five games played. A pretty significant drop-off in the early rumblings of this year's WHL season. Not to mention the fact that Genther did have a really good preseason with the Arizona Coyotes. It's just, he wasn't going to make the team because he was 18 years old and the Coyotes were supposed to be bad, so why would you want to go out there and expose a guy like this to a bad hockey environment? Or not bad in terms of the environment. I mean, I guess it's kind of bad, right? Like, they're not paying their building fees, and there was all this controversy with the previous GM and all that. Maybe it's a bad environment. I don't know. But I was referring to the quality of the product on the ice when it comes to how bad this hockey team is. Would you rather go out there, give Genther another year in the WHL to really hone his game and try to sustain that two-point-per-game mark that he had in last year's shortened WHL season? The Canucks, if they were picking ninth overall instead of trading it for Connor Garland, would likely have seen a lot of value in a player like Dylan Genther. He probably would have been the best player in their prospect pool today, with the graduation of Pod Colson and obviously Pedersen, Hughes, and Besser in the previous few years as well, but he would have been good. That's it. A good prospect, doing good things in the WHL. What does he do for this team today, though? Probably not much. It's why, when you take a look at what the Canucks ended up getting for Dylan Genther, Connor Garland is, like, an absolute darling to me. Mostly because when you take a look at what Genther is supposed to be in his prime, to me, Genther can be the 70-point complimentary top six winger. Connor Garland is that today. And Connor Garland is 25 years old. Connor Garland is signed till 2026. He's going to be 30 when that contract expires at $4.95 million a year. Garland, so far, is a point per game with the Vancouver Canucks. 3 points, 3 games played, I get it. Point per game early on in the season like this doesn't really mean anything, but it cannot be understated just how good Connor Garland has been for the Vancouver Canucks that this guy being one of the top point producers on this team is a given. When it comes to players who have made impacts on the ice, you don't notice anybody more than Connor Garland. You don't appreciate anybody more than Connor Garland. He goes out there like Hoglander on steroids. That was actually a comparison I saw. I forgot if it was on Twitter, if it was on Reddit or whatever. He goes out there like an absolute bullet every shift, backchecking, stealing pucks. When he has the puck on his stick, he's not afraid to slip and slide and spin around guys to protect it. He's so good along the boards, despite the fact that he's only 5'9". And this guy is offensively capable to boot. He is so smart when it comes to creating offense. He scored that NHL 21 glitch snipe yesterday. And when it comes to what Dylan Genther is supposed to be, a top six complimentary winger who can play with some really good players and maybe get upwards of 60, 70 points, Garland is already that. And he's already here. So I just can't wrap my mind around how good of a trade this appears to be at the very beginning, you know, anything can happen. Anybody can go out there and explode offensively. Dylan Genther comes into the NHL next year and he gets 100 points. Maybe that happens, and maybe I look like a fool making this video. But, like, today, just based off of how Garland has played so far, he has been the most notable Canucks forward in a very positive way throughout the three games we have played in the NHL season to boot. There was this tweet over here that I saw that made perfect sense, dude. Connor Garland is a combination of Alex Burrows and Cliff Ronning. That's so accurate, you know, just based off of how these players used to play. If you're familiar with the older Canucks and how they would make things happen on the ice, Alex Burrows was an absolute workhorse. He would always go out there, always give it 110%. He had sneaky, crafty offensive abilities. And Cliff Ronning was 5'8", slippery, sneaky, and scory as well. This combination right here is pretty good. And both of these players were cult players for the Vancouver Canucks. Connor Garland is that already, and it's only been three games. And, you know, I'm honestly kind of surprised, because I was always watching Connor Garland. He was playing for the Moncton Wildcats back in 2014, 2015, and all that. He was really good in the QMJHL. He had to force his way into the AHL and actually make a name for himself, because he was a fifth-round pick by Arizona. Like, he was an overage player when that happened as well. So, he really needed to prove that he had what it takes to be a top player 
wherever he went. He did that in the AHL. He did that in the Arizona system last season, getting 39 points in 49 games played on a bad team. He was over a point per game for Team USA at the World Championships, and now he is here for the Vancouver Canucks, signed till he'll be 30 years old, and he is doing all that and more. I like Dylan Gunther. I really do. I think he's going to be a good NHL player, and the Coyotes have a good pickup over here. But for Connor Garland and the Vancouver Canucks, I could not have been happier. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think so far about what we've seen? I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll show you the 99. And bye.